Hello, my name is Lorraine Power and I'm a graduate of the Higher Diploma in Drama Education from Griffith College. In this video, I hope to provide you with some practical advice on teaching in the socially distanced classroom. Like most of you, I'm really looking forward to getting back to work. Currently, the government guidelines for all indoor activities state that students and teachers must maintain a strict social distance of two metres apart. This distance is measured shoulder to shoulder. In the first picture, you will see correct social distance observed. In the second picture, the two students are not the full two metres apart. Wearing PPE is essential, but it's also very important to prepare your students, in particular young students and new students, for what you look like wearing PPE. You could do this by sending an email with photos of yourself and any staff members with and without PPE, so students know the friendly face behind the mask. Now I'm going to show you some drama activities which have been adapted to suit the new regulations. It's very important that we plan our classroom or venue to ensure that correct social distance can be observed at all times. You may wish to use tape to mark the floor if that's allowed in your venue, or you may choose to use removable floor markers. The top diagram shows incorrect social distancing. The bottom diagram shows correct social distancing because each student is two metres apart. The first game we're going to play is a simple warm-up game. Now in the past there were many, many warm-up games. A lot of them unfortunately evolved, involved walking across the circle, moving and in today's climate they're not the best. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a game that we can play in a stationary position, all maintaining social distancing. So this main game is for your younger students and it's, it's good sometimes for younger students to kind of sing or speak in rhyme when getting to know each other's names is just a little bit easier. So I'm going to start and um, welcome Oscar. Oscar, my son, Hello. has very kindly volunteered to help us today. Okay, so I'm going to start. So, Lorraine, Lorraine, how do you do? Who's that standing next to you? Oscar, Oscar, how do you do? Who's that standing next to you? Jennifer, Jennifer, how do you do? Who's that standing next to you? Now we're going to do a name game for your older students and there are a couple of variations of this. You can say you can do a name and an action or you can do a name, an adjective and an action. And if you're doing an adjective, try and make it a little bit harder for the students and get them to use an adjective, the same letter as the first letter of their name. So I will start this and then we'll move on to Oscar. Hi, my name is Lorraine. Lovely, Lorraine. Hi, my name is Oscar. Optimistic Oscar. Now I'm going to show you a few physical warm-ups that you can do socially distanced. And the first one we're going to do is a game called Popcorn. So to play this game, we all have to pretend that we're a kernel of popcorn and that we're sitting at the bottom of the pot. So we're going to go into our places and do that. So we're sitting down at the bottom of the pot. You can just crouch down there, as for if you bend your knees. Well done. Okay. Teacher's going to count to three. And on the count of three, when you're ready, you jump up and say, pop. Now, if two people jump up or more at the same time, they're out and they must take a step backwards away from the circle. Now, for younger children, you may have to play this game two or three times until they get the hang of it. And for older children, you'd make it a little bit more challenging 
instead of them all facing inwards, they can all face outwards and pop, but facing the opposite direction. So we're going to just demonstrate the normal game. So we're going to go down on our hunkers. Teacher is going to count to three. One, two, three. Pop. Pop. Okay. So that's popcorn. It's great fun. Students really, really enjoy it. And it's a game that can easily be played at a social distance. So the next game we're going to play is a variation on the game cross the circle. So obviously for obvious reasons we can't be crossing the circle anymore. So you can you have numerous ways to vary this game. So the first would be hands up, the second could be sit down, the third could be hands out, fourth could be thumbs up. So you choose which way you want to vary the great the game. So we're going to demonstrate for you now. Hands up if you had cereal for breakfast this morning. Hands up if you brush your teeth this morning. Hands up if you watched TV today. Hands up if you played computer games today. Hands up if you used a phone today. Hands up if you saw a tree today. Hands up if you got your 10,000 steps today. The next warm up I'm going to do, I'm going to do it two ways. The first way is if you have somebody in a wheelchair or who has mobility issues, they can do this warm up from their seat. So we are going to, I'm just going to teach Oscar the moves for this one and then we'll do one after that. Okay, so Oscar, for this one, we're going to move, move forward, move back, to the left, to the right, hands up, hands down, to the left, to the right, and again, and you sing with me, one, two, three. Move forward, move back, to the left, to the right, hands up, hands down, to the left, to the right, well done. So for children who don't have any mobility issues, the next variation is, move forward, move back, to the left, to the right, stand up, sit down, to the left, to the right, and you can do that faster and faster until it gets to really fast, which will be move forward, move back, to the left, to the right, stand up, sit down, to the left, to the right. The next warm up we're going to do is based on the nursery rhyme, the Grand Old Duke of York. So first of all, you need to teach your students the song in case they don't know it. So we're going to just have a practice once or twice here with it and then we'll show you what can be done with this as a warm up. Okay, so Oscar, the words are The Grand Old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men, he marched them up to the top of the hill and he marched them down again. And when they were up, they were up, and when they were down, they were down, and when they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor down. Well done. So once your students know the song, every time you hear the word up, they're not going to say it, they're going to do the action of going up on their tippy toes. If you have a student who has an issue with that, you can even get them to put their hands up in the air. As long as they don't say up, they're going to do an action for up. Okay, so we're going to start. So every time you hear the word up, you're going to do an action, okay? So which would you prefer, tippy toes or your hands up? Okay, we'll do that together. Okay, three, two, one. The Grand Old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men. He marched them to the top of the hill and he marched them down again. And when they were, they were. And when they were down, they were down. And when they were only halfway up. That was me, you made a mistake. They were neither up 
Lower down. And it's no harm for you to make a mistake. Teachers are human, so just keep going if you do. The next part of it is we're going to do the action for down. So we're just going to go down on our hungers for a down. And again, if you've any students with mobility issues, you know, you might want to give them a hand gesture or something simple that they can do to show going down. So this time, we can put up back in, but we're going to go down every time you hear it down. Is that okay? Okay. Three, two, one. The Grand Old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men. He marched them up to the top of the hill and he marched them again. And when they were up, they were up. And when they were they were and when they were only halfway up they were neither up nor excellent do you think you can do it with up and down in it yeah let's give it a try okay the grand old duke of york he had ten thousand men he marched them to the top, top of the hill and he marched them again, again. and when, when they, were, they were they were and when, when they were they were, they were. And when they were only halfway up, they were neither. Or. Well done, Oscar, because I made a mistake and you didn't. Great job. The final game we're going to demonstrate today is a concentration game called the Minister's Cat. Each student stands in a circle, socially distanced, two metres apart. One by one, they describe the Minister's Cat using an adjective. We are now going to demonstrate this game for you. The minister's cat is an angry cat. The minister's cat is a bold cat. The minister's cat is a crazy cat. The minister's cat is a disgusting cat. The minister's cat is an enormous cat. The minister's cat is a funny cat. The minister's cat is a gigantic cat. The minister's cat is a hairy cat. Thank you very much for listening to me today. I hope this video has been of some use to you. Remember the only thing permanent in life is change. We just have to embrace it and be as creative as possible. You will find an attachment with this video providing information on all the games that were played today and some additional ideas for socially distanced games in the classroom. Thank you.